Hello and welcome to another video and today in this video we're going to be talking about my top three Peter Capaldi episodes. Uh, obviously we haven't seen um, Twice Upon a Time which by the way I think is a terrible title uh, but nonetheless uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some of my favourite episodes from uh, the Peter Capaldi era of Doctor Who. Um, so without any further ado let's go. Okay so at number three now we have Under the Lake. Now Under the Lake was written by Toby Wales, and in my opinion, uh, this really felt like proper Doctor Who. It really felt like, uh, a, well, it was a proper base under siege story, and I really, I was really interested about this one because uh, there seemed like there was going to be a few like ghost type aliens in this. And uh, when I was watching it, uh, I sort of knew that, to be honest, they they weren't they weren't really going to be you know ghosts. Uh, it seems like there's more to these things than meets the eye. Um, and I really like the use of um, sign language because that's never really been done in Doctor Who before. And I really like that how that was brought into the episode. Um, so like sort of those uh, um, people that use sign language can relate to it a bit more. And I thought um, the performances were really good. Um, I would say uh, the characters weren't that interesting, but uh, I really like the fact that this episode was split into two parts. Um, and uh, of course the second part being before the flood. Um, Under the Lake really did feel like a proper sci-fi romp and it did feel like a little bit of a run around at times um, but I really liked uh, the production of it, I thought it looked great, the editing was really good as well and uh, as for the cliffhanger, um, obviously as the audience we knew that Peter Capaldi, you know, the Doctor wasn't going to be killed off, um, but it was quite interesting to see how they would uh, possibly get out of this one. Um, so yeah, to me, Under the Lake, uh, Toby Whithouse did a great job of this, uh, Toby Whithouse, Toby Whitehouse, how you want to pronounce it. Uh, yeah, I think uh, he did a great job with this one. Uh, it's a shame that uh, in the following season, uh, The Lie of the Land was, um, you sort of wonder, you know, how are these written by the same people sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, Under the Lake to me felt really, it was a really great solid story and uh, for me it probably gets a 9 out of 10. So let's move on to number 2. So at number 2 now we have World Enough in Time which was uh, a story uh, that was uh, this year's uh, penultimate episode for series 10. Um, now uh, this episode had a lot of antici anticipation. Um, we got a great episode which came before it, uh, that being The Empress of Mars. And then we got another, like yet again, we had another great episode. And this episode um, saw the return of uh, the Mondasian Cybermen. But uh, I think they should have just cut, they should have just referred to them as the Cybermen. Um, I think Gareth Roberts did uh, tweet something about this uh, on Twitter, uh, how they should have just called it the Cybermen instead of making this whole big deal of um, you know the Mondasian Cybermen. Um, and we also saw the return of John Sim, which was, uh, unfortunately, it was uh, the, the BBC leaked it. Um, and I think if they hadn't have leaked it, it wouldn't have been, it would have been uh, one of the most shocking uh, events in the whole of new series Doctor Who. Um, and probably, I'd say, maybe the, sh in the, the, sh the show in general, I think it would have been such a, you know, gobsmacking moment. And, of course, it's the first time on TV that we saw two masters. Uh, of course, Big Finish have uh, toyed around with this idea, uh, but on, it was the first time for TV Doctor Who that we saw two masters interact. And I think it was a really nice ending for Michelle Gomez, um, especially in, well, for The Doctor Falls. And I think World Enough for Time was such a dark and uh, scary Doctor Who episode, and there was so much... Um, so many iconic moments that will probably just stick with people for the rest of their lives I think uh, rest of their fan lives um, and I think uh, the way in which uh, because obviously if they hadn't have leaked it I wouldn't I think I would have you know seen how this could be a possible Cyberman story because uh, in the whole hospital uh, sequence with the Stephen Hawking type talking um, sort of patience that was really dark and that was really quite terrifying and to see Bill get like a proper chest unit conversion whatever that was uh, that was really quite heartbreaking and they really went to town with it and I'm really impressed 
um, with Stephen Moffat for going um, as far as he did with the episode, and it's probably one of his best stories ever, uh, because I think this is uh, a story which is instantly, you know, a classic. As soon as it was over, um, you know, I just could not wait for ne uh, the next time. But one of the problems I didn't have with it is that some of the pictures that they released, uh, well, to be honest, <coughs> it wasn't so much a problem with the episode. It was the way that it was like marketed and advertised. Um, so they released pictures with uh, uh, Pearl Mackey's character of Bill, uh, you know, because um, we sort of predicted that she was going to get turned into a Cyberman or Cyberman, and uh, she did, uh, sort of. Um, but uh, I think it was such a fantastic episode, um, and I think Razor was quite an interesting character, you know, being there with 10 years, and then, you know, he turned Bill into a Cyberman, and he did that for 10 years. And he waited just for that moment. So, you know, it's a real mastery thing to do. And I, it's quite interesting to see John Sim being written by, um, well, John Sim's master being written by Steve Moffat, because we've only seen him written by Russell D. Davis. So it's nice to see him written by another master. And I think, um, you know, this is so master, masterful. Like, this is proper uh, old school master. And I really did enjoy that. Um, so let's move on to number one. Okay, so at number one now we have Heaven Sent. Now I think this is probably number one on uh, a lot of people's lists, and it's uh, number one on my list, as you can see. Uh, I think it's probably one of the most original Doctor Who stories we've had since uh, I can't think of a, an original Doctor Who story off the top of my head, but it was so gritty and incredibly well acted, incredibly well written, with a very, very small cast. You know, it's only pretty much Peter Capaldi and um, the, uh, the Veil, I think that creature was called, it was pretty much just those two characters set in this castle, uh, which I think was called the Confession Dial. Uh, it's been a while since I watched it because I, I don't own the Series 9, I haven't I haven't got the Series 9 box set yet, um, but to me this episode was absolutely perfect, and it's just a shame to see the episode which came next, and um, to me, again, it was like, how were these two episodes written by the same person? It was just mind-boggling, I don't understand how... Uh, we had such a great first half, and then to see, you know, uh, what came next. And I've uh, seen a few people say, um, you know, Series 9 ended with Heaven Sent and uh, Hellbent is not canon. I've seen quite a few people say that before. Um, but yeah, Heaven Sent was so beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful Doctor Who stories of all time. And it, it is probably Peter Capaldi's best episode because... It's incredibly well directed. Uh, Rachel Talalay, uh, I don't blame them for getting her back to do the finale. Um, and I don't blame them for getting her back to do the uh, Christmas special of uh, this year. Uh, she's such a brilliant director and I hope they do get her back for Series um, 11. But I think um, it's going to be a completely fresh start. Uh, but uh, hopefully they might bring her back one day. Um, but I think that she did such a great job in this episode. It looked... Uh, it was just beautiful the way it was shot, the way it was written, the way it was edited, uh, the effects were on point and I think Peter Capaldi probably gave his best performance, he was really on form as the Doctor, I mean Peter Capaldi, Peter Capaldi is always on form, he's such a, he's such a brilliant Doctor and I think this, this episode showed um, you know, the fact that Peter Capaldi can be such a great actor, it's just a shame that he didn't get this type of material uh, in this first series, um, because as you can see in this video, I haven't included any episodes from his first uh, series, unfortunately. Uh, there are still some good stories in there, but I think uh, I just preferred these episodes. Um, so yes, I mean, Heaven Sen is uh, a beautiful, uh, really well written Doctor Who story, and I think a majority of fans uh, really did enjoy this, and I think there are only a couple of people that didn't like it, um, I'm not sure. Now, I'll have to find these reviews and see if people actually did, you know, dislike. But if they did, it was their opinion. Um, but in my personal opinion, this is Peter Capaldi's best Doctor Who episode of all time. So that was my top three Peter Capaldi episodes. Thank you very much for watching this video. Comment down below and tell me what your top three Peter Capaldi episodes are. And uh, stay tuned for my next video, and I shall see you soon.